am delighted that you're all here and that you're able to defy the elements and uh, make it here in person. Uh, I want to welcome you to uh, today's workshop. Um, I'm co-chair of our um, Standing Committee on Emerging Sciences for Environmental Health Decision Making. And this is one of a series of workshops that we host. I'm going to tell you uh, just a couple of things about our committee altogether. And then I'm going to turn things over to our, um, our workshop chair, who will tell you more about the context of this workshop and frame it and set it up for a lot of interesting presentations today. So here is what our, um, our committee does for Emerging Sciences for Environmental Health Decisions. We examine, explore, and consider issues on the use of emerging science for environmental health decisions. And I always like to refer to us as a beacon, and that is we're out on the horizon looking for emerging trends and new ideas as it relates to environmental health decisions. And scientifically, we want to stimulate and um, really uh, provoke um, a integration of thinking and at the same time, we want to make sure that whatever it is that we're doing scientifically is going to ultimately have relevance when it comes to environmental health decision making. So we facilitate communication among government, industry, and environmental groups and the academic community. Um, the committee works closely with the federal government liaison group. Um, all of them really add to our discussions as to what are the topics that we should be talking about. They often ask us, here are issues that we are facing on a daily basis where, where we have to make um, uh, federal decisions and develop guidelines around environmental health decisions and environmental health protection. And here is what we want to know. So they keep us informed and also on our toes to make sure that what we're doing is relevant. Um, we seek to examine scientific advances that may be used in identifying, quantifying, and controlling environmental impacts of, of human health. And I want to make sure that we acknowledge the ge very generous support from the National Institute for Environmental Sciences, who actually has been supporting this work. We think that this committee might go back as far as 12 to 15 years. So um, it has been an important place for convening thought and for, again, being on the horizon, doing horizon scanning to anticipate what's coming down the, um, the pike or not, um, but also making sure that people are, are uh, communicating with each other and um, look, looking across various um, stakeholder groups to ensure that we are on the cutting edge of environmental health uh, sciences and technologies. I want to make sure you know about the members of the standing committee. Um, my co-chair, Kim Buckelhide, um, Lisa Elward, uh, Wei Shui Chu, Kevin Elliott, Kristen Pullen Fednick, Gary Ginsburg, Norm Kaminsky. Um, I wanted to correct just for Gary's sake. Uh, Gary's now with the New York State uh, Department of Health. Uh, Margaret Caragas, Patrick McMullen, Gary Miller, Reza Razapour, uh, Gina Solomon, and also an ex officio member who is a former chair of this committee, and that's uh, Bill McFarland. Our work, here's just a sample from some of the many workshops that we have held over the years uh, to give you a sense of um, the ideas that were intentionally convened, identified in advance of when this was a big thing. Uh, so for example, uh, here's the, um, on the upper left, exploring hum human genomic plasticity, plasticity and environmental stressors, emerging evidence on telomeres, copy number variation, and tra transposons, um, modeling health risks of climate change, uh, another workshop, new insights into microbiome study for environmental health. That was a real anchor workshop that led to a variety of different um, uh, work that stimulated a variety of different work uh, after the workshop. So we like to believe that <clears throat> we're early enough in the, in the development and the trajectory of these ideas that we're stimulating and facilitating further investigation. Here's another, um, I remember, I think it was at the House of Sweden, does that sound right? Uh, the exposome, a powerful approach for evaluating environmental exposures and their influences on human disease. Um, Inter-individual variability, new ways to study and, uh, implications for decision making, and then biological factors that underlie individual susceptibility. Um, these are just a small sampling 
of the kinds of workshops that we've done in recent years. If you have a topic for a workshop, things that you're seeing that are missing, that there aren't other conferences, there aren't other meetings, there aren't places that are being convened in order to get on top of or even to look forward um, as to where this field is going or if things are in a just an emerging state and you think they need to be stimulated, by all means let us know. There's information on the registration table and also um, there's actually a link here. It's a survey monkey where you can uh, fill out a very short three or four box survey uh, to get your ideas about um, uh, uh, new areas that the committee should be considering for new workshops. So we are very eager to get your feedback. <clears throat> so today, we get to feature this very interesting topic of the interplay between environmental stressors, infectious disease, and human health. And I have the privilege of acknowledging the members of the um, uh, organizing committee, Robert Newman, our chair from the Aspen Institute, John Valdis from the National Institutes of Health, Megan da Davis from Johns Hopkins University, Gary Ginsberg from the New York State Department of Health, uh, Margaret Carragas, Dartmouth College, that's uh, myself, Josh Rosenthal, National Institutes of Health, David Savitz, Brown University, and John Vandenberg, who quite unfortunately could not be here today from the Environmental Protection Agency. So I'm gonna turn things over to Keegan and just to reinforce that we are very, very delighted that you're here. So good morning, everyone. I'm Keegan Sawyer. I extend my welcome to everybody who was able to come and everybody who's on the webcast as well. I have the fabulous task of giving you our housekeeping rules. <laughs> Please turn off your phones or silence them if possible. Um, the webcast picks up quite a bit of noise, so it would be best if you turn off your ringers. It's just a reminder. Um, we do have water down here if you need a drink during this thing, but we have an excellent cafeteria on the third floor for coffee and meals and other things like that. Um, we invite and everybody to speak loudly into a microphone. Again, this is a webcast event, and given our current situation, many, many people are watching on the webcast instead of in the audience with us. Also, please, we encourage you to speak up. We encourage discussion throughout these. One of the hallmarks of these workshops for the last 10 or 12 years is that we have engaged audiences um, speaking throughout. So we welcome you to do so. The rest of these, um, there are some disclaimers. There are some you know, remembering, if you're on social media, to use our hashtag. Um, please mind these things very carefully. Nothing here is the opinion of the National Academies. Everything is the opinion of the individual who comes and speaks, but not necessarily the, you know, the opinion of their, their institution, unless they say so. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Robert Newman, and he will give you the context for this today. Thank you. Thank you. 